This is KGW News at 5. We begin at 5 with breaking news. A homicide in Gresham. Police confirmed they found at least one person shot at an apartment complex near Northwest Florence Avenue and 15th Street. Beyond that, details are scarce right now. We do have a crew on the way to this scene. We'll bring you updates as we get them. In the meantime, I'm Maggie Vespa. Thank you for joining us. Our top story at five is more proof that Portland's record battle with gun violence rages on. Police say someone also fired at least a dozen rounds outside a busy stretch of bars and restaurants in Southeast Portland's Buckman neighborhood last night. Three people were hurt and several bullets flew into a bar and nearby event venue, say police. It happened around 11 p.m. near 7th and Burnside. Police say the three victims should survive. They are still searching for the shooter or shooters. They don't know at this point. Owners of one of the businesses hit the Bossa Nova Ballroom posted on Facebook about the shooting. They say they were hosting a pajama dance party when the shooting started. The owner writing, quote, we immediately stopped our event, brought house lights up, and our door security staff even assisted some of the injured, seeing our patrons in animal onesies and pajama wear, having to navigate this senseless act was heartbreaking. We do have a crew also digging into this story. We'll bring you updates as we get them. Switching gears, a jarring photo out of battleground tonight where an explosive fire left a home destroyed and a dog dead. Clark County Fire says five people lived in that house. All of them made it out OK, but sadly their dog did not. Firefighters got the call a little before eight last night. They say that fire started in the garage and moved quickly and making this even more dangerous. They say ammunition inside the home started exploding. On top of that, propane tanks started venting, fueling those flames. Investigators don't know how that fire started. All right, let's pivot now to a famous and famously bizarre chapter in Oregon's history, kind of resurrecting itself in Antelope, Oregon, a historic building used by the Rajneeshis when they took over that central Oregon town was up for auction today. And Christelle Kumway joins us from the newsroom with more on that. Christelle. So Maggie, the court collapsed in 1985 when Rajneesh, the leader, was arrested for immigration fraud. Now the building where they printed their newspaper is up for auction. Today, not many live in the town of Antelope. I think it's somewhere between 40 to 50 people. It's pretty much a ghost town. A different scene from the 80s. The first Rajneeshis arrived in Central Oregon in 1981. The group bought a cattle ranch near the tiny town of Antelope and started setting up what would become a settlement of thousands of people. They, it was 64,000 acres, big place, and they started moving their people in for this, uh, following the Bhagwan, who was a spiritual leader. The commune first took over the town of Antelope, then tried to take over the Wasco County government. Along the way, poisoning more than 700 people with salmonella in salad bars. It all ended when the Bhagwan was arrested and deported. Several others went to prison. The people left, but the structures stayed. The minimum price is 258500 And now one of the Rajneeshi's old buildings is on the market. This was a commercial building. It's zoned commercially, and they apparently bought it and used it as their printing house and as an office space. And I guess they had a pretty wide distribution. Real estate broker John Gill there. says the 3,000 square feet two-story building was built in 1898. Current owners bought it in the mid-90s and ran it as a museum. So anybody who buys the property will get assigned all those rush niche items. Realty Marketing Northwest is in charge of the auction. The published reserve price is 258.5. That means that at that number or above, it sells. So far, about 20 bid packages have gone out to people interested in making a pit stop here in the town of Antelope. Just kind of a quiet place in a sleepy little town, pretty close to some great outdoor recreation. And um, so if you're looking for a little quiet time, want to get out of the big city. The auction deadline for the property is on December 8th at 5 p.m. The High Desert Museum near Ben will open a display with the Rajneesh era items from the building starting in January and running through October. Maggie. Christelle Kumway live for us. Christelle, thank you so much.
Well, Portland firefighters are remembering one of their own tonight after Lieutenant Jerry Richardson lost his battle to cancer. Richardson's cancer is believed to be related to his job fighting fires. He was hired uh, back in 1999 and worked at several stations around the city. Richardson was also a U.S. Air Force veteran who served as an air base firefighter for four years. Friends say becoming a firefighter was his whole dream in life. And to see what Portland Fire did today for my friend, there's not words to describe how beautiful this was. And I just thank Portland Fire so much for what they've done. Richardson is survived by his wife, Heather, his children, Eddie and Kaylee, his father, Harold, and his mother, Sharon. Well, about this time last year, we introduced you to a teenager with autism dedicated to helping young hospital patients feel warm and loved. Tim Gordon has an update now to Lucy's story. I'm a stuffed animal connoisseur. Lucy Kraus is a stuffed animal connoisseur who knows how to stitch. And she remains busy doing a lot of it, creating stuffed animals and quilts by the dozen. Some beautiful quilts and stuffed animals. Oh, Lucy, those are gorgeous. You have gone above and beyond. And once again, she is donating those items by the box and bag full to Legacy Salmon Creek Hospital in Clark County. So how many this time around? I don't know, but it's pretty <laughs> great. I can tell you, it's a lot. Have as much attention on it as possible. <laughs> we first met Lucy last November. That's when we learned about her love for sewing. Her mom and her grandmother began teaching her when she was six. By nine years old, she was really good and wanting to put her talents toward a good cause. Hi, I'm... Lucy, and I'm really glad I got to make some donations here. This week's delivery to the hospital was about 275 stuffies and quilts. Most will go to young patients who need some extra TLC. The hospital is very thankful. And when somebody takes the time to make something by hand that comes from the heart, it's very special, and they understand that. So we are thrilled to have Lucy supporting us in our community, and um, we just love her. Lucy's mom, Holly, says her 14-year-old's autism is a gift that has her literally wanting to save the world one stitch at a time. For Christmas, this one is super fun over here. And people like Laura Myers are taking notice and helping out. Laura just made a special fabric delivery to the Kraus home. Uh, I saw Lucy's story about a year ago, and my mom had just passed away, and she was a seamstress, a master quilter, and so I knew I wanted to give all of my mom's fabric to Lucy. This made my week. This made my month. Um, it, it's, it's just incredible. Back at Legacy Salmon Creek. Thank you, Lucy. This is unlikely to be the last Thank delivery. I like to do it just pretty much anytime because we can always use love and lucy's family is happy to help her keep on giving she calls her project um lucy's stitched hugs and i think that says a lot because it is a hug from her to someone else and she really means it that way in clark county tim gordon kgw news good for her that's fantastic and by the way lucy has donated almost wait for it 2,000 items over the past couple of years. So if you'd like to learn more and possibly help out, we have info at KGW.com.